Hello, brothers and sisters. Hope you're doing well. I hope you're enjoying uh, getting into God's Word. I know I am. It's really forced me to, to look closely. Doing the social gathering around God's Word has really forced me to look closely into each chapter, and I've loved that. And, you know, I'm just, right now, I'm just kind of blown away with the fact that at this point, in, you know, we're in Matthew chapter 16, Jesus is a wanderer. He's essentially a homeless man with a, a band of nobodies, you know, fishermen and, and others that, uh, that are like uh, those fishermen who don't have respect in that society. And it's just interesting to think about Jesus wandering and being homeless for three years, isn't it? You know, he, just a few chapters earlier, he had responded to somebody who wanted to be his follower that foxes have holes and, and the, the birds of the air have nests, but the Son of Man has nowhere to lay his head. And boy, was that literally true at this time. And so I think, though, that Jesus being that, that way really, it, it, I think it confused the Pharisees and the Sadducees. Uh, I think it really frustrated them, and they didn't know what to make of it. They didn't know what to make of him. For one, they were looking for the Messiah to come in the form of, of a you know, conquering hero, right? And, uh, and so they're looking at Jesus as, well, I'm here, we're hearing things about him, but he's not from Herod, from the line of Herod. He's not from the line of the high priest. He's not even a Pharisee or a Sadducee. Who, this guy's a nobody. And so I think that would have been confusing and frustrating to them, along with the pride issues of who does this guy think he is, you know? Uh, we're the ones, we're the leaders and the teachers and the shepherds of Israel, and here he is, you know, doing all of these things and saying all of these things. So, so they keep coming to Jesus, and here they come to Jesus again in chapter 16. To, it says to test him with a, asking for a sign from heaven. They had just done that three chapters uh, earlier, well, in chapter 12, verse 38, and very similar thing. Jesus says, I'm not going to give you a sign except for the, the sign of, of uh, Jonah. And, and so we know that. We know that that means that he'd be dead and buried for three days. And then he would rise again, similar to how Jonah was in the belly of the whale and came out after three days. Oh, belly of the fish, excuse me. Uh, so this interaction happens. A um, few things that stick out to me in this chapter. You know, when Jesus asked his disciples, who do you say that I am? And they, they say, well, some say you're this, some say you're that. And Jesus says, but who do you say that I am? Peter responds, and he doesn't respond half-heartedly or without, you know, any sort of certainty. He says, you are the Messiah, the Son of the living God. And he is congratulated, essentially, by Jesus and just said, blessed are you, Simon, son of Jonah. Now, it's not known for certain if his dad's name was Jonah, because in John chapter 21, he's called the son of John. Uh, so I tend to believe that Jesus is saying, blessed are you, son of Jonah. In other words, son of the sign of, of Jonah. You didn't need the sign. You already understand that just like Jonah would be, was, it was in the belly of the, the, the fish for three days. I'll be in the belly of the earth for three days and I will arise as Messiah, as Lord. Blessed are you for seeing that. And so I think that's really, really neat. But then, just a few moments later, it's amazing, isn't it, that Peter would, would flip on a, on a dime that he didn't really fully get it. Because he's when Jesus is telling him what he's going to have to go through, Peter says, no, never, that will happen to you. And Jesus has, tells him, get behind me, Satan. So he goes from congratulating him to calling him out in a major way, in a way that would have really humbled Peter. And I think that that is supposed to uh, cause us to, to look at our, ourselves as well. We should see a lot of ourselves in Peter and be careful and be aware that one day, one moment, you know, we can be praising God for who he truly is. And the next, we've flipped on a dime and are doubting him and are are not living according to what we know is true about him. And so we daily, it's a daily process to continue to bow our knee to him, acknowledge him for who he is, and uh, come to his word so that we are knowing him in spirit and in truth, worshiping him in spirit and in truth. And I love that. And I think that 
with these things in mind, verse uh, 18, when Jesus says, I tell you that you are Peter and on this rock I will build my church. I don't think that Jesus is saying on you, Peter, I will build my church. I think that he's saying that on this truth that I am the Messiah, the son of the living God, I will build my church. Partly because when Jesus calls Peter, when he says, I tell you that you are Peter, he's saying I, uh, Petros there, which means small stone. And then he says on this rock, which is Petra, which is a foundation boulder, a huge rock. So it's a lot of people say it's a, it's a play on words there that, hey, small stone, this boulder that just came out of your mouth, this boulder, this truth that is massive, that is what I'm going to build my church upon. And I, and I tend to agree that, with that interpretation. And I just wanted to finish it up with saying, verse 21, then he ordered his disciples not to tell anyone that he was the Messiah. Why? I think it's because they wanted to press him, and you, we see this later, into this conquering hero mold, which Jesus, again, did not come to be this conquering hero. He will be a conquering hero king one day, but not at that time. At that time, he came as a servant, as a slave to suffer, a suffering servant for our, on our behalf. And so thank God that that's why he came so that our sin could be forgiven, which is the main thing that keeps us from God. And the main thing that we need to continue to submit to him and ask him to forgive us and to make us more like his son, Jesus, the, the Messiah, the son of the living God. Thanks for joining me today, brothers and sisters. I hope that you were encouraged.